Ranger 1's rig control unit land. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now making our final approach on the Games Master Resort. We wish you an enjoyable stay. Thank you, lovely. Yes, here we are on the Games Master Oil Rig again. The salty spray licking against our legs with nothing but our protective hoods for comfort. But we can all take warmth and cuddliness from the man who sets the challenges, the Games Master. Greetings. Welcome to the Games Rig. The first of this week's Jolly Japes is a romp through the perilous world of the geriatric superhero Captain Dynamo. I'd like you to guide this um, aged sprite through the fourth level of the game in one and a half minutes without losing a single life. So prepare to force those arthritic limbs into action. Helping the senile superhero evade the tortuous traps on this challenge is a young lady from Cheshire. Please welcome Emily Taylor. <laughs> Welcome, Emily. Now, Emily, do you think video games are played more by boys than girls? Um, yeah. Yeah, well, why do you think that is? Well, I don't know. I think it's just one of those things like football. Most people think it's a boy sport, and I think people think video games is for boys. But as far as you're concerned, it's for girls as well? Yeah. All right, well, listen, good luck with the challenge tonight, Emily. If you'd like to sit yourself down in a games playing chair, I'm going to go up and find out who's with me tonight. It's Tom Watson from Renegade. Welcome, Tom. Good evening, Dominic. Now, Tom, have you got any tips for Emily in the deepest voice you can muster? Well, I'd just say she's got to really watch out for the uh, creepies on the platforms. This is a one and a half minute challenge, one life. She can't afford any mistakes, and it is a tough one. Okay, as Tom said, Emily has one and a half minutes to get from the start of the level to the end of the level. Emily, are you ready? Then your one and a half minutes begin now. Okay, off goes Emily. Okay, the character, Captain Dynamo, has got a way of actually killing the nasties by landing on top of them. But what she's because got... He, because he's fat, isn't he? Because and he's, he's fat. He squashes, he squashes them, basically. He squashes them completely. But what he's got to watch out for is going in the side of them. That'll take him out. Okay, Emily's gone very, very fast. She's obviously got to watch these spikes here. She's only got one life to go. That's right. This is the hardest bit, is to jump over these three spikes onto that platform. She's made that nice. And now she's going to go up the middle here, up the middle, onto the spring. She'll okay, look for the this is good to boost her up. Not further. She's got 30 seconds. Now she's got to oh, watch out for these slammers. <laughs> now she's waiting there. Oh, well timed there she's from Emily. She's doing it nicely. She's got to get moving up to the top. Oh, yes, she's got to well done, Emily. Perfectly done. On the tortoise, on the lover spring, picks up some diamonds on the way. Now there's little bits of spray coming up here. Do That's they right. Have these, these are poison canisters. They, they'll again take take a life off. She's made it. She's doing the mark. Now there's a guillotine here. Whoops. Just watch your yeah. head. Again, it's all good jumping. Control on the timing. Okay, she's coming up for one minute. She's just got 30 seconds left. She's doing very well, Tom. She's got to watch these little She's doing things, extremely yeah. well, actually. Very confident. Otherwise, this everybody's favourite painting is going This to is a pixel-perfect jump she's got here, though, Dominic. Pixel perfect. Yeah, now she's she's done ducks to miss, miss the blades. Ducks again. Carbon Dynamo Runs she's through. The she's through. There. I don't know if she's going to do it, Tom. I well, she's got one time. more spring to manage. She's and got she should be up there. She should be up there. Three, two, she's one. done it. Emily's done it. Amazing. With literally seconds left, Emily Taylor tops the challenge. Really tremendous. Well done, Emily. Brilliant. Emily, that was amazing. I thought this was one of the toughest challenges we had, especially with just one life. Were you worried at all? Yeah, very. <laughs> well, what were some of the difficult bits in it? Um, then? The, well, there was a part where the two spikes were crossing, and I just I missed it the first few goes, but I did it in the end. Yeah, it looked a bit hairy there to me. Yeah. All right, well, Emily, as a result of your triumphant progress through the level, you go home with the Games Master Golden Joystick. <laughs> Taylor! 
Yet another happy camper leaps enthusiastically back to his cabin. And three more experts line up to thrust their opinions on the waiting world in this week's reviews. This week we have an exclusive television review of Star Fox, the most talked about game of the year. It's the first game to feature the new SFX chip, a revolutionary gadget which allows arcade quality scrolling, rotating and 3D jiggery pokery. The game itself is a scrolling shooting spectacular and we've assembled our own star reviewing panel. Nick Watby, editor of Super Action, Games Master's chief playtester Dougie Johns and NMS main man Tim Boone give the lowdown on what should be the game of the year. Having Nintendo owners got something to look forward to. Loads of action and atmosphere, and overall an absolutely amazing game that left me somewhat aroused. For 60 quid you're getting something which is just about as good as anything you'll find in the arcades, and considering those machines cost thousands, you're quitting. There have been many games in the past trying to be like Star Fox, but none have yet succeeded. Star Fox takes it to another level and really blows away anything that's come before. The only sort of criticisms I've got of the game is that it's really hard. I mean, for example, we had the game in the office for one week and none of the guys could get off level three. This game is rock. Star Fox is a nigh on faultless game. Amazing graphics, amazing sound, just the right difficulty setting. Basically, it's like having virtual reality in your own home. SFX, more like SEX. Buy it now. This year, the buzzword is most definitely CD. Three systems are out now. Philips CDI, Commodore CDTV, and PC CD-ROM. But with Sega's Mega CD-ROM coming out next month, some of you may be wondering what the whole malarkey is about. Well, we've got Les Crane, chairman of Software Toolworks, one of the pioneers of CD software, to tell us exactly what it's about. When you have a disk-based system, you're storing the material that you want to store, the data, on a magnetic medium, like a tape or a floppy disk, and the space is extremely limited. When you're using CD, you're using a, an actual laser light to read the bits and bytes of information off a laser disk. And the amount of data, information that can be stored is thousands of times greater. Okay, here's the deal. CD-ROM means read-only memory. So when you put a CD-ROM player in your machine, all you can do is read off of that disk, but you can't write to it. In other words, you can't interact with it. Now, Philips has their CDI system, which is CD interactive, so that you can be involved to a certain degree with the CD-ROM disc. Didn't miss by much. The Commodore version of that is called CD-TV. You could theoretically have a movie, for example, in which there would be several different endings, and you could get to play a part in the movie and choose which ending you wanted to go for. But what about the games themselves? If you can imagine that an old floppy disk or a, or a cartridge that you put in the old Sega or the old Nintendo system held maybe a page worth of material, and a CD disk holds a library's worth of material, if you're playing an adventure game, can you imagine how many thousands of rooms and thousands of characters and the graphics and the sound and the full motion video pictures that can be put on those games? They're going to be a heck of a lot more fun to play. It's all just a game. <laughs> but will the games be any good? This all looks incredibly enticing, but I must admit, up till now, all the CD games I've seen have been a little bit ropey. The potential's certainly there. Let's hope they use it. Another potent blend of verbose verdicts and invaluable information. Now, this week's celebrity is standing to attention, ready to plunge into his challenge. To see what task faces him, let's go to Games Master. Time for a bit of um, physical exertion, I think. I'm sure you're all aware by now how partial I am to a game of association football. So I make no apologies for choosing Striker as my second challenge. Two one-minute halves should produce an entertaining encounter. For this challenge, young Ben McCluskey is taking on one of the greatest left footers since Pope John Paul I, Aston Villa and England winger, Tony Daly. <laughs> Oh, 
Welcome, Ben. Now, Tony, I know you've had a bit of problem with the legs since you've been on the camp. Yeah, that's right. I was doing a bit of training this morning and a bit of scaffolding fell on me. So, uh, a big apologies to Big Ron for that one. Um, listen, we know you've got some of the best ball control in the Premier League. What kind of a game are we going to see from you? What team are you playing? Well, I'm um, England and it's all out attack, I'm afraid. Right, Ben, young man, what team are you playing then? I'm playing Italy. And what, what type of game are we going to see from you? He's very, very good, this guy. Well, I might do a few passes, but I'm going to try and score and cream him, really. All right, the best of luck to both of you is Ben. If you'd like to sit down there, Tony in the right hand chair, we'll get ready for kickoff. And helping me with the halftime oranges is Games Master Magazine's own Jim Douglas. Welcome, Jim. Hello, Dominic. Now, Jim, any tips for striker here? Um, diagonal hits from the corner of the box always seem to go down well. OK, then. So it's two one-minute halves here between Tony Daly and Ben McCloskey. Are you ready, boys? Yeah. Then kick off. So we have Ben kicking off. He's Italy in the blue playing down the pitch. Tony's England in the white playing up the pitch. And it's a good defence from Italy there. Oh, oh, someone's down there. Oh, a bit of dirty play the from England there. The referee's glasses. Oh, oh, it's a shot. It's a goal. It's a goal. Brilliant first goal. Started off in the middle, curved to the left. That's quite a good tactic, That's Jim. That's right. Curving it into the left. Ball coming from a diagonal. They're the surest ways to score. OK, it's England again. Oh! oh it's OK, it's with the Italian goalkeeper. He kicks it up to the midfield. England get it back. It's with England number 14. He covers it again. It's out of the goal. He's oh, down. Good Brilliant defender. Defense. Good defender. The keeper was lost, but the defender got it out. Now they're on the counter-attack, but England have got it back. Launching a counter-attack of their own here. Here goes England number seven. He's coming that away. Oh. Goalie saves it, but oh, it's gone out. Good clearance. It's out for a throw into England. 28 seconds left in the first half. The Italian goalkeeper. The Italian goalkeeper. Now the Italians aren't getting enough distance on those goal kicks. How do you if get they more bring, distance? If they bring that line right down, it will keep it low and fast all the way up right. the pitch. Oh no, this says, oh it's oh, in! Goal. Oh no, it was a bit of a short kick out, like you were saying, Jim, to try and avoid them. Exactly, they've what? got to keep it away Tony from that. Tony pounced with predatory ease. Another one and for Tony, it's carved it, it's out there though. Oh, nice score from the Italian good number defense. five though. And here comes Italy, the Italian number five, he's oh, doing well. Oh, he's awful awful play oh no, that was a foul there, surely by oh. Tony, the referee didn't see it. But the Italians are giving a bit of an out as well. Cynical that There's seven it. seconds left in the first half, does he have time? I don't think he will. It's out for four, oh. and there's four seconds left. I don't think we're going to see any more goals in this half. Yeah, but here come here, one chance. last, one last attempt, yeah. and no, it's half time. Well, at half time here, it's two 0 to Tony Daly. If you want to see if Ben McCloskey can claw his way back, join us after the break. <laughs> Welcome back. We're in the middle of a great match. Tony Daly playing England is 2-0 up against young Ben McCloskey playing Italy. They're just getting ready to kick off for the second half. So, Tony, if you're ready, off you go. So here we go for the second half. It's 2-0 to England. Now Ben is in the blue. Italian shots playing up the pitch. Tony in the white shots of England playing down. And it's all England again. Here comes the number oh, 14. The yes, it's is in. in. Oh, he is little Tony Daly doing a brilliant somersault there. What can Italy do to come back into this game? Oh, they really need to tighten up the back and start hacking away at those England legs. There's a lot of holes and more holes in the defence in Brecon City. Oh, oh no, it's no. another one from it's, England. It really is a whitewash. 4-0 to England now. Yeah. Mind you, this looks promising. Oh, oh it's a good attack. Surely it's now. an right kick. They missed it again. How, oh. can the, how could the keeper get to those? Like, Lightning really reflexes from the England keeper there. But that's Italy's best chance in the game so far. Certainly. If we can get another couple like that, then we'll start Here seeing some Here comes on the break again. He chips it up. It's a cross. No one's out. Oh. It's a goal kick. I would have thought that would have been a corner I there. I thought it was a corner myself there, Jim. Bit of a strange referee. I think he must be English. I think, so. I think he's from Scunthorpe. There's only 16 seconds left the here. The are coming back. I don't know if Ben can score four goals in that time. Maybe he can get one back for Pride. But it's still Tony Daly. Oh, nice that aftertouch. The aftertouch again, Jim, making you, it 5-0 to England. You just can't get around it. You've got to cut him out far earlier. Seven seconds left here. Here come Italy in one last ditch effort, but no, they'll be dispossessed by England. No, We're coming yeah. to the end. Oh, it's a foul oh. the has spotted it. And that's it. Full time. Full time here at the Games Master Stadium. Tony Daly wins 5 0. That was a brilliant game, Ben. 
I think it was your players that were at fault. What was that? They had too much spaghetti for lunch or something? No, nah, it's they're just too slow, really. The boys let you down in the day, Ben, but you put up a good fight anyway. Yeah. All right, now, Tony, you had a predatory instinct in front of goal. You didn't let anything slip today. That's right. I think that's answered my critics saying about my finishing in front of goal, I think. All right, well, Tony, as a result of that thrilling victory, you have won our very own charity shield, the Golden Games Master Joystick! <laughs> So let's have another round of applause for Ben McCluskey and our special guest, Tony Daly! Yeah! <laughs> While Auntie Marisha gives Tony a helping hand into the chopper, we'll get a helping hand from Games Master in the consultation zone. Hello, Games Master. Hello, young scamp. How can I brighten up your miserable little life? I'm popular on the Mega Drive. Is there a cheat to take me to any of the levels? There is indeed, young man. When entering the level code, enter the number of the level and then the word bit. So for level um, 145, you enter 145 bit. Got that? Thanks a lot. Who's next? How can I win at Streets of Rage 2? Frankly, young man, that sort of question offends my intellect and doesn't deserve to be answered. Um, next, please. Hello, Games Master. On Zelda 3, I found a locked chest in the blacksmith's hut in Dark World and I can't work out what to do with it. I'm mildly surprised that you haven't been able to work this one out. If you take the chest to the middle-aged thief in the Great Desert and Night World, He'll open it for you, revealing a magic bottle. Super, thank you. I hope that these tips will help alleviate some of your gaming difficulties. If not, too bad. Some more delicious pearls of wisdom for you all to chew over. Now for our final challenge, it's time for the second semi-final of our special magazine challenge on Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Last week, Dave Goodyear from Mega Drive Advanced Gaming emerged triumphant. Please welcome tonight's two journalistic competitors, Paul Mellerick from Mega and Dean Mortlock from Sega Power. Start with Paul. Start with Dean. All right. OK, first of all, Paul, now I've seen you in action on Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and you were quite smart on that. What do you think of the sequel? Um, well, I'm quite confident I can beat it, Dean. All right, well, Dean, what have you got to say to that, then? Um, well, he's confident, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to send him back to Mega with his tail between his legs. OK, well, we've got some serious rivalry building up here. Let's go over to Games Master to find exactly what level they'll be playing. This week, I decided to go for a speed challenge on the first level of the chemical plant zone. Select your route with care, as some are considerably shorter than others. Good luck. So, chemical plant zone one. Paul, are you still as confident? It's a tricky little zone, but I'm sure I know the best way to go. And um, what about you, Dean? A final word from you. There's lots of secrets, so it's going to be exciting. OK, then. Dean, in fact, I'd quite like you to go first, if you'd like to sit yourself down in a games playing chair. Paul, if you'd like to hang on behind, we'll get ready to start. And she put in such a splendid performance last week. We've got her back again, Jane Goldman from GameZone. Welcome back, Jane. Hello. Now, Jane, a little bit different from the level last week. Yes, it is. Um, I'm sure the guys know exactly what they're doing here, but my little gem for this week is hang on to some rings. Um, we don't, usually don't say so in the speed challenges, but this time it's such a dangerous level. They really might need some. OK, the level is the chemical plant zone. Whoever gets through the finish line in the fastest time moves on to next week's final. Dean Mortlock is going first. Dean, are you ready? Ready, Dom. The best of luck. Off you go. OK, here goes Dean Mortlock from Sega Power here. It's a good quick start he's getting here. That's right. He's using the platforms instead of winding his way over the, over the little That's things there. Right. Another quick bit there. He's missed the bottom platform. He's going up the top route. He's lost his rings. He's got to pick some up quickly. But he's doing well. He's only been going for 13 seconds. I think this is a smart way that Dean is going. Looks like it. 
Oh, yeah, he's got the sonic speed now. He's got a little bit of a off. spot on there. Oh, he's yeah. zipping through. Just missed that jump, but he's going to get the spring here. He's caught up again. 25 seconds gone. This looks very good indeed, Jane. Oh, he's got to try that jump one more time, or maybe even one more time. And I think this is, this is an actual quicker sort of semi-secret route he's going this time. Yep, it looks like it. There is one alternative route in this level. And, and now we hit some of the speed it. brushes there. Oh, and it's speeding Sonics ahoy. This is what we like to see. He's been going for 43 seconds now. This is a remarkable he's time here from Dean Mortlock. Now he's into the secret pipe. He doesn't know where he's going to come out here. Now he, he didn't go for the rings there, Jane. He just uh, That was along. a very wise move because that you lose time on these bits. Okay, 57 seconds here. He's quite close to the end now. And here he's he comes. One minute dead. So a brilliant time by Dean Mortlock. Will Paul Mellorick beat it? A quick verdict on Dean's performance there, Jane. What can I say? I'm weak at the knees, Dominic. <laughs> it must be my aftershave. <laughs> All right, Paul, are you ready? Yes, Tom. Then off you go. All joking aside, though, Jane, it's a very Indeed. tough time to beat that one minute. It certainly is. He's got a bit of a task ahead of him. Now, already He's we saw well. it. He was good, but Dean actually leapt a lot of those platforms That's before. That's right. We'll soon find out if that was the quicker tactic or if Paul is being much smarter. He looks pretty fast to me. He looks a wee bit nippy, doesn't he? He certainly is. He just missed a little speed trap there, but it wouldn't have mattered. Yeah. He would have been stuck by the wall anyway. Oh, he's OK. Oh, oh, he's oh there. that could cost him. I think he's lost a couple of seconds there. Looks like so, it. 24 seconds. He is going good. I think he's got a faster he's split the time. He's too. He's it's doing impressive. very well. Oh, he's hit the speed brush. Things. Tony Hart used to have a couple of them, I think, <laughs> in his back room. Into the tunnel. He's in the tunnel. I don't know if you've noticed Tony Hart now. He's got two women helping him out now. He doesn't have Mr. Bennett, that guy that used to come out <laughs> in the long and dirty old mag. Oh and it's, it's a change for the better. It certainly is. All right, Paul mellorick has been going for 43 seconds now. A little bit of a sonic spurt there. They seem to favour this technique. Oh, well, 48 seconds, mean. he's done it! 48 seconds! Unbelievable time! Which means that Paul Mellorick is tonight's winning semi-finalist! <laughs> Right, turning to you first now, Dean. Dean, I th we both thought one minute was an excellent time. Uh, what, what went wrong? Uh, nothing went wrong. I just think he was lucky. I don't know. I think he cheated a bit. I just think there's uh, I don't know, something he doesn't know. But... Paul, you've got to answer those accusations, heinous as they are. The best man won. <laughs> There's the evidence. So what, how, how come you managed to get quicker? We thought you were actually slower at one stage. There's various routes through the level, and it's just picking the right one and knowing what's coming ahead of you. And you certainly did pick it well. Paul, the big news is you're coming back for next week's final against Dave Goodyear of Mega Drive Advanced Gaming. How do you think you'll do then? I'll prove that I'm the best. All right, we'll look forward to that. Let's have another round of applause for Dean Mordlock and Paul Mellorick. Much as it pains me to leave you, the dinner gong brings another show hurtling to a close. Auntie Manisha's done some booyah base tonight. While we go and munch on that, I'll bid you good night. The Games Master Club is open to all our viewers. It costs £11.15 for a year's membership. To find out more about what you get, either send a large stamped addressed envelope to the Games Master Club, PO Box 41, London E14 9GT. Or you can ring this number, 0891 600 123. Calls cost 36p a minute cheap rate and 48p at all other times. You must have permission from whoever pays the phone bill.